Welcome to Baking and Breaking Bread. My name is Elisa and I'm so glad you're joining me. I have not popped on here in quite some time and so I just thought it would be great to um, get back to it. It has been a season of change, like lots of changes in my life, lots of good things, lots of new things, lots of things that I already knew, but like I'm stepping back into them with wisdom and um, perspective and all the things and so I think just being on here and speaking from a, a place of being taught different things in this season some of the things that I am navigating is um, identity and so I think everybody's still navigating identity like who am I who am I in Christ how do I walk that out how do I walk it out with the purest form of who God made me to be in my purpose and what I'm created to do. And then ultimately like continuing to walk that out with peace, with clarity, and like continuing to know that um, Jesus loves me just the way I am and there's no striving. My efforts to obey his word are out of a place of love and really giving him back everything he deserves, glory, praise, honor. Um, because he's worthy of it all. So I got married and it's been incredible and it's been so great. And so walking into this season of being a wife, a part of my journey was that, and my story is that I was married before. Um, I was married to my high school sweetheart and um, really had a life where I got to know somebody in a different way. We grew up together. Um, we had two beautiful girls. It was good uh, as long as I could remember it lasting until um, it wasn't. And there were quite a few years there where unfortunately um, I was not equally yoked. And so that just means that I was not with somebody who I believed was walking with Christ. And so what I, what I saw was a shadow of it but there was no true transformation no fruit in this person's life and so things began to happen and be uncovered and um, there wasn't change there wasn't lasting change it was just behavior modification and so those things really don't last uh, Jesus has to be the one to completely break chains off of people's lives so it was um, cyclical and it, it never uh, was fully surrendered to God. And so in 2020, I ended up getting divorced and felt devastating. Um, being with somebody for that long, your identity can really get caught up in who you are because you're connected to somebody for so long and or a role. And so like I was a wife, I was a mom, and those are all important things and those are all real things. Like I definitely know that God created me to fulfill certain roles. Um, he allowed me to experience them and so I was walking in them, but my identity when those things no longer were true in my life, like I was no longer a wife, I was a single mother, those things began to really lose its grip on like, who am I? And I had to walk through a season of identity of really rediscovery who I was in Christ. And I began to just dive deeply into, one, my relationship with the Lord. He had to restore my soul. I was um, really in a place of a blank slate and feeling lost and not really understanding um, that just because that role changed didn't mean that I changed and that God taught me lots of things through sanctification, through being changed, through hardship, um, in that relationship, through those difficulties, through those trials, I wouldn't take them back. It allowed me to deepen my faith. It allowed me to trust in the Lord. It allowed my prayer life to explode in private. Like I was able to take my, my heartfelt brokenness into my closet, my prayer closet, and just sit before the Lord and really question things and ask things and then focus, you know, it was okay to, to question and ask and really um, grieve, 
but then I would refocus on how big God is and not how big my problem was. And he always met me with his love and his peace and his reassurance and his promises. And that's so important to know what God says. So I would tell you like, get in the word, especially if you're finding yourself in a trial, get in the word of God. That's what sustained me um, for a lot of years, even after the divorce, um, the years that followed was a season of silence. It was a season for me to heal and a season for me to really get before the Lord and um, put him back in first place in my life. Even though you might be a wife or a husband, um, a father or a mother, your role does not trump God's place in your life. Other things like children and spouses do not take first precedence as who you love. Ultimately, your relationship with God should be first. And so it was like a reorientation of my heart to put things back in order, to heal, um, to remember that God never leaves me or forsakes me. God's always loved me. Um, he wants the best for me. And so um, he'll work it all for my good. And so in, in that season of three years, I, um, I healed and I was able to get to a place that I still had desires for um, partnership with, with a spouse and like ultimately wanted to be able to grow old with somebody and do life with somebody and feel loved and reciprocated and seen and heard and cared for. But that timeline and expectation began to change when I realized Jesus was enough and I could run farther, faster, longer if I was single and could show up with my extra time and my talent and my treasures um, without having a spouse because I wasn't divided. And my loyalty was really just my family, was my kids, and seeking after the Lord, the things of the Lord. But ultimately, I think God knows the deepest desires of our heart and he knows that he wants to grant those things to us. And so I, am, I almost feel like I got to a season, a place in my life where I was like totally content. There was nothing that I lacked um, because God's good like that. And so I probably was in some of the deepest, most rewarding place I was in my spiritual walk just because I had the time to connect with God. I had the quiet to connect with God. Um, there were just rhythms in my life that, that um, allowed there to be just some extra freedom in my schedule. And I sought the Lord and really just took that as a time of reflection and, and healing, but ultimately like refining me. Like who have you created me to be in you? And how can I give you glory back with this life? You know, time is fleeting. You only have one life to live. So how can I encourage others? How can I point other people back to Christ? How can I use my story for your glory? And my testimony seems so crazy, but like in those three years, I, I had people calling me and were like, hey, I'm really sorry, but like I, I really don't know how to answer this person who's struggling in their marriage, who feels like it's the end. And I know when you talk to them, like, you have hope and you have encouragement and you're for marriage, you know, like I wasn't like um, a scorned woman, you know, like I, I was somehow able to have grace and, and my story wasn't just that, that I had gotten hurt in the marriage. I had hurt others, you know, so I, I understood both sides of that coin. I had been on the other side of hurting somebody in a relationship and going outside of that relationship. And so I understood like sometimes the enemy has his teeth so sunk into you and you never thought you were going to be that person and so it's a slow fade and so there was a lot of grace in my heart for both sides of it and um, and I just took that time and when people would call me I literally would be like give them my phone number like let me talk to them let me encourage them let me pray for them and so it was really cool because even in that season of, of 
silence for me and really the Lord was preparing me to really have a heart for people who have gone through the painful parts I have and encourage them. Um, I hadn't gotten to, to the other part of my, my mountain yet, right? The mountaintop. I was still kind of coming out of the valley, but I knew God was faithful and I knew that God was going to um, work it all out. I didn't understand how or when, you know, I didn't know if I was going to meet anybody or not, but like I knew that marriage is a beautiful thing. It says so in the word and, and you can't force anybody to be in a marriage with you. Ultimately there's two people with free will. And so that person has the choice whether to enter into um, healing and wholeness, walking out sanctification, walking out this, this reshaping of their mind and their heart and and really wanting to better themselves through a healing journey and a forgiveness journey to better their relationship ultimately and so I began to talk to these women and even men sometimes to encourage them that were struggling and um, and then pass them along to other people if you know, if it was a guy, like it was no longer my responsibility to help them, you know, like I would pass them along and find somebody for them. But I, I was still able to encourage them no matter what season they were facing um, to know that God was in it and with them, with them through it all and that they didn't have to get too far down the road, that they could trust God, that he was going to equip them every day with what they needed to do and all they had to do is keep their eyes on Jesus and so that's what got me through <laughs> scriptures got me through um, there's a verse that says you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is fixed on you because he trusts you and I remember feeling like okay I can experience peace when I keep my eyes fixed on him when I keep my thoughts fixed on him why because I trust him and so I had to constantly remind myself, like, God, I trust you and, and speak that over myself because there are a lot of times I couldn't trust the circumstances. I couldn't trust the person. I couldn't trust um, what my eyes and my five senses were telling me. But what I could trust was a God who loved me and a God who was going to get me through the, the pain, the problem. And I knew that he was going to be able to work it all out. So um, all that to be said, I knew in that season of silence I was being refined and I got to a place of contentment and God was so gracious that he knew the desires of my heart and he brought somebody in my life when I decided to begin serving the Lord in a different capacity. I had stopped serving in, in a ministry, had a little couple, I don't know, three, four months off or something like that. And then I jumped back into a ministry that was recovery church that was vision casted at my church. And so I don't have a recovery background, but I understand addiction. And because I had to walk alongside people who had dealt with addiction that were in a very close proximity to me, um, I understood the monster of addiction. And so I felt very much called to just be able to be a bridge uh, from my church to a church plant that was happening. And so when I did that and I said yes, um, over the course of the next few months, I began to serve alongside the team and get to see their hearts and understand how the enemy can use such a sinful stronghold in someone's life to affect families and friends and lives of the people who are in those addictions. And my heart was to be able to be a bridge for people to find freedom to Jesus. And so even if I didn't understand their exact pain, I knew the one who could set them free. And I began to serve alongside them and God really allowed my heart to connect um, with Jeff's heart. And so that was actually the campus lead. Um, we got to be friends over the next few months and then uh, over a pizza receipt, I had to be reimbursed. And so we met outside of church. And from that point, we began to have conversation and um, see if God had aligned our lives for such a time, you know, as this and be able to see if this was even a relationship that God had um, ordained. And so we walked it out as friends. It was incredible. It was the first relationship I had ever had where I was pure. Um, I had never been sexually pure. And so um, we took that pretty serious and we had to have some conversations around what our boundaries look like and why we were doing this. And um, 
and it was important for both of us to really honor God in that and that we really wanted God's best and that we wanted God's blessing in this relationship and we wanted to do things right and God honored that and we allowed um the Lord to lead a lot of our of our relationship. There were a couple times we had to push pause and and navigate conversations and really seek the Lord and making sure that this was a relationship where we were going to lead each other better and not worse. And God did it. He allowed us to really flush out a lot of you know our baggage or our hangups or our hurts and navigate those before we even got engaged. And so the beautiful part of um, my story is that on August 11th, I was able to marry my best friend and um, we are now serving in ministry together. We both have one heartbeat uh, for people that are lost and need Jesus, um, for people that are stuck in sin and that just need to be full of hope again and know that there is something greater than themselves out there, Jesus Christ, who can break them free from chains of addiction, from traumas, from hurts, from hangups. Um, we're, we're all recovering from something. And so uh, the beautiful part is that God gets to meet us where we're at and set us free. And uh, it's been a really cool, cool life to live. I didn't expect that my journey was gonna end up with so many twists and turns. You know, when, you, when you're when you a little girl and you think, you know, when you get married and what your life is gonna look like and all the things, you know, you begin to kind of picture movie, scenarios where everything kind of works out and it's this beautiful life and there's no issues or traumas and um the reality is is that you know as much as it's fun to watch that uh not no one is promised how their life is going to turn out and so ultimately the most beautiful place to live is a life surrendered uh with open hands to what jesus has because ultimately however life throws curveballs to you you can walk with peace because you have Jesus, the Prince of Peace, and you don't have to worry because you have the one that holds your future in you, walking beside you, hemming you in. It says he goes before us and he's in us and he walks beside us. And so you can walk with peace today, no matter what you're facing, no matter what trial, just know that God is with you. If you have placed your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he is in you. He is leading and guiding and directing you with the Holy Spirit. You have been sealed and by the promised Holy Spirit. And so he is the one that leads and guides you into all truth. And so he is going to direct your steps if you allow him. And so the truth is, is that when we really take God's word serious, when we truly believe what it says and we decide to live this out, you can live with peace. You can live a victorious life. You can overcome any struggle you're facing because you walk with the one who is overcoming victory, Jesus Christ. And so be encouraged today. I hope my testimony, my story gives you hope. Um, it's almost... <laughs> I'll be 40 in February. It'll be 40 years in the making. It didn't turn out the way I thought it was going to, but man, it is a beautiful tapestry of the God story God's written in my life, the way he's woven people in it, through it, um, to encourage me through different parts of it. And I hope that I'm able to be a small thread in the tapestry God is writing in your story. Thanks for joining Baking and Breaking Bread. I'm glad I'm back in my garage. <laughs> I'm in the middle of cleaning it up. Um, but I decided to take a break because I haven't been able to jump on here with all the equipment and all the things. So we're coming back. Have a great week. See you soon. Love you guys.